So the jig is up. You have to wake up and smell the coffee. Hollywood is on strike. On May 2023, 11,000 screenwriters took to the streets of Hollywood to protest studios' unfair labor contracts. But these have now been joined by actors who are worried about a new issue. Actors now face an existential threat to their livelihoods with the rise of generative AI technology. Artificial intelligence and how it can generate performances that never took place. In this video, I'm going to discuss how AI is changing film, what's behind actors' concerns, and the bigger issue behind these developments. We will not be having our jobs taken away and giving to robots. I am not Morgan Freeman. I am not even a human being. The use of generative AI in film isn't really anything new. It has been used in the past, for example, in the movie The Irishman to make the actors look younger. Another example uh, is in Indiana Jones, where Harrison Ford uh, all of a sudden became again his younger self. And who knows, maybe one day we will be able to see movies starring Marlon Brando again or performances of Michael Jackson. The technology behind these developments is called generative AI. And generative AI is now capable to recreate faces and voices in a hyper-realistic way. At the moment, the technology is still relatively immature, but over the past couple of years, it has really made significant advancement and breakthroughs, and we can expect hyper-realistic AI-generated media to be developed already in the next couple of years. And the other thing to mention is that generative AI does not necessarily mean that all movies will be entirely created by artificial intelligence, but in fact, it might just be something like um, enhancing the background of an image, maybe creating a landscape that might be very difficult to produce otherwise. Basically a hybrid of real world acting combined with AI. And if we can generate any scene, any landscape or any person, this of course is going to have massive ramifications for the film industry. But there is an elephant in the room. When we think about Hollywood, the first people that come to mind are basically the established actors, such as Tom Hanks, Leonardo DiCaprio, Emma Watson. But the truth is that these are really only a very tiny majority, and Hollywood has a huge underbelly of people who actually work there and ultimately keep the shop running. Think of, for example, VFX artists, extras, makeup artists, sound engineers, the list goes on but particularly extras are now worried. From a capability standpoint, generative AI will undoubtedly be able to recreate extras in a hyper-realistic way within just a couple of years, basically replacing them with almost entirely synthetically generated actors. But the point is that AI itself is created based on human data. In other words, it doesn't just create a face out of thin air, but it creates it based on inputs of people's faces that have been fed into the system. And in the case of acting, in all likelihood, this is going to be the very people that it will replace. And this creates two issues. Historically, extra starring in a movie would basically earn a residual, a share of the profits of the movie based on how many times it has been shown uh, in cinemas or in TV. And this compensation has been steadily decreasing as the movie industry shifted increasingly from TV to platforms such as, for example, Netflix. This is a check for 24 cents before taxes. I'm in the new Barbie movie, for instance. I'm in the trailer uh, with Margot Robbie fingerprinting her. I only made a couple hundred bucks that day. I don't make any royalties. I don't make anything off the streaming. But regulatory provisions are not in place yet to determine whether data from actors' faces can be reused by AI. That creates legal uncertainty and especially potential abuse by those who have the economic capital. Now, executive reports hint that the industry is shifting towards a licensing model, whereby actors might license out to film companies the right to use their face for new movies. Will this affect some of the more established actors? Absolutely. And some even embrace it. Take, for example, Tom Hanks, who recently said this. I could get together and pitch uh, a series of seven movies that would star me in them in which I would be 32 years old from now until Kingdom Come. You know, I could be hit by a bus tomorrow, and that's it. But my performances can go on and on and on and on and on. And this would represent big business for established actors who could license out their faces and voices to basically create more performances that ultimately generate more income. But it's a very different story for extras 
who are not very well known. Some extras might also license out their appearance, which effectively would eliminate their days that they're paid on set. But there's also been, been reports of filming companies pressing for lifetime licenses, which would effectively mean that extras would be automated away entirely. And Hollywood is not the only one. Generative AI is also revolutionizing music. Take for example this video of Freddie Mercury singing My Heart Will Go On. Yeah. And there are plenty more. It's also in this industry that this licensing model is starting to take hold. Grimes, for example, recently came out and said that anyone can use her voice under the condition that royalties would be split 50-50. She can do this because she's extremely well known. But then again, what happens to a classical singer who spent two decades training in a music conservatorium and can now be easily automated for recordings? How many streams, how much money do I get? It's not being translated and, and it's not working for the artist right now. And I just want to speak to that. But there's also another side of the story. And this is where Hollywood's dilemma really comes out. Now have a look at this video here. Cyborgs and humans united in purpose, bound by the allure of the unknown as they embark on an unforgettable... The creator of this video used mid-journey for creating images. They then processed them through Runway Gen 2 to turn them into film. And I think even the voice of the narrator is actually entirely generated by AI. But this required zero equipment, zero microphones, zero actors, all it took was a laptop just like the one that you and I have and some creative thinking. Now, what does this tell us? Generative AI might actually democratize the capabilities of filmmaking. Give it two to three years time, maximum five, and I guarantee you, we will be able to see the first AI generated Hollywood blockbuster created by maybe a kid in a garage from a laptop like the one that you and I have. That itself, I think is good news particular because Hollywood itself has been an industry that has been notoriously characterized by nepotism and very difficult to break into, simply because of the capabilities required in order to create a movie. Take Oppenheimer, that had a budget of $100 million in order to be produced. Generative AI will remove these barriers and make movie making almost entirely for free. Now at this point, I want to be extremely clear. What's happening in Hollywood is not a story about the risks of generative AI. AI is dual nature, and as we have discussed, it can create many benefits such as spreading out creativity. This is ultimately a story about power, and an industry which has failed to recognize how to navigate this transition for the workers who keep the shop running, and probably also doesn't really care beyond the economic incentives. But the truth is that at this stage, there really seems to be little reason to think that this trend will stop. History teaches us that the pace of technological development can hardly be stopped. This disruption also creates opportunity and a revolution at what it means to create film or music. But it will require adjustments and ensuring that people won't get left behind. From Hollywood to Abbey Road.